Um, I would say yes. They, um, the same uh, uh, potential, the same opportunity and the same constraints that exist for, for uh, the telecom industry globally do exist in, in, uh, in Canada. Uh, it has to do with uh, uh, capacity constraints. It has to do with the fact that uh, penetration of wireless devices is getting very close, although Canada still have a certain way to go, but in certain countries it's over 100%, which means that one person has more than two connections to, uh, to, uh, to mobile networks. Uh, in Canada, the, I think the latest figures I've seen is that there's somewhere around 24 million subscribers uh, among the three or various networks that exist in Canada, which puts the penetration at somewhere around between 70 and 75 percent. So we're getting to a stage where to grow, you have to achieve a larger market share. And the fact also that the average revenue per user, the so-called ARPU measure, is, is practically flat. So the industry has a problem which is shared around the world about the ability to make more money out of this business and accommodate the, uh, the demand and capacity that we, uh, we uh, the bandwidth that we referred to initially. Uh, there is also another issue in, in Canada which is not unique to Canada, it's true for uh, everywhere in the world, is the fact that uh, music doesn't get necessarily compensated for the usage on these networks. It's fine for these uh, applications that have been licensed, but uh, and that figure is disputed, but some say that 90% of the music that is consumed on the net or mobile devices is done through, uh, through piracy, through pirate uh, sites, in which case the consumer, or the, rather the, uh, the songwriters, doesn't get compensated. But I suspect that is the subject of another discussion.